Welcome to another exciting episode of Crazy for Cars TV. I'm your host, Steve Gray, and this week we're coming to you from Delaware Park. It's, it's late in the season, it's late October, and this is probably going to be one of the last events of the season. Today is actually a rain date. Yesterday was the scheduled day for the show, but today the turnout has been very good considering the cool weather, it's in the mid-50s, and being a rain date. Speaking of the rain date and speaking of late in the season, our website, Crazy for Cars TV or crazyforcars.com, or you can find us on Facebook at Crazy for Cars. It's crazy, the number four, and cars with a Z. Send us an email. Send us a message of where your show might be next year and what shows you might like to see us attend and shoot your cars at your, at your shows. We're going to take a look at some cars here at Delaware Park today. We're going to talk to the sponsors and some of the hosts of the show. Don't go away. This is going to be a great show with some great cars to see. We've made our way over to the first car of the show. I, as soon as I got here, I made a beeline for this. I wanted to take a look at this. It's a 41 Buick. 41 Buick Special. 41 Buick Special. Now, tell us a little bit about the history. The, the car was built in Penns Grove, New Jersey from a gentleman named Egon. The designer of this car was a guy named Charlie Smith. And like I say, this car was built in the late 80s and was able to purchase this car in this beginning of April after me following the car since I was a kid. Now you said you, you grew up really close to the uh, assembly plant. Yeah, I grew up probably uh, four miles uh, from the, where this car was actually built uh, from the ground up. And like I said, the, the guy was a mentor to me and it was a unique car to be able to purchase it at this day of my life. Now, from what I understand, you own an automotive facility. I own Cecilton Auto Repair over in Cecilton, Maryland. We do you know, all make model cars. Uh, we're a full diagnostic shop. Having said that, you obviously know a lot of what makes this car what it is. Tell us a little bit about the drivetrain, what engine it's got, that sort of thing. I say it's a 1941 Buick Special. The drivetrain in this car is a 1972 Buick LeSabre with a 350 Buick J, J motor with a 350 turbo and a 286 rear diff. When I looked at this, one of the things that I happened to notice was the seam going across the roof. And you said the only fiberglass piece on this is that is that lift-off roof panel. Yes, the uh, the only piece is fiberglass is the actual, it's a, called a target top, so the top comes off for a, make it a convertible. What about the interior? It, it looks like it's just a two-seater now. Yeah, it was a four-seater, and when they did the chop on the car, they actually had to redesign the car on the interior part to, to make it a two-seater. It's a great car. Now, it, did it look like this when you got it, or have you put some work into it? Um, I've just done maintenance to the car. The car looks identical to what it do, did when it was first built back in the late 80s. Um, i just been doing maintenance so the car can be driven safely to and from shows. Well, it looks great. Thank you very much for leading off the show and talking to us about it today. It's a great-looking car, and we really appreciate talking to you. Thank you, buddy. Well, we've made our way over to a late model Mustang. I'm here with the owner. Tell us your name and tell us a little bit about the car. Uh, name is Brad Sexton. It's a 2016 Mustang GT. Uh, it's got a rear mount turbo setup on it. Uh, me and my Nick behind me. Uh, me and him built it in uh, our garage, totally custom. This is a beautiful car. I don't think the camera's going to do justice to how nice this black paint is. We opened the show with my black Jeep and it doesn't look anything like the black paint on this Mustang. Now most of the cars you see here at the show are backed into the parking space. This one's pulled in head first because the money shot on this is out back. Tell us a little bit about what we're actually looking at. So you're, we're running a three inch stainless from the uh, headers into an 88 Turbonetics ball bearing turbo. Uh, makes around 776 to the wheels. Now, what a lot of people don't understand, turbos and stuff and any forced induction is usually at the front of the car. This is very unusual to have it out back. Mm -hmm. Well, you get cold air, air, air intake temps. Uh, you leave all the room for uh, all the stock components up front. You don't have to yeah, move anything around. All around, it's it sounds great. <laughs> well, oh yeah, I heard the car run. It just it sounds magnificent. Do you have to worry about lag with it being back here? No, nah, just like a normal turbo, builds boost very quickly. Tell us a little bit about what's up front. What I mean, is it stock motor? Obviously not. Stock internals, 
just did injectors, did a um, McLeod racing clutch. How long have you had it? I uh, had it for about three years. When I saw this yesterday, it was over, it was actually at the shop. It wasn't here at the show when I first saw the car. And we talked about bringing it out to the show today. You said you would be here. I really wanted to take a look at this and talk to you. It's a, it's a great looking Mustang. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for showing it to us today and thanks for talking to us about it. Appreciate it, thank you. Well, we've made our way over again to something else completely different. Tell us your name and tell us what we're looking at. Uh, my name's Ralph Boone. You're looking at a 72 E-Type Jaguar V12. This is a beautiful car. It's in beautiful shape. Thank you very much. I just asked, you've actually had this for, you said, about 15 years? 15 years, yes, sir. Was it like this when you got it, or did you do any work to it? Uh, it's pretty much just like this. I've done the suspension and tires and stuff to make it safe. How hard are those wheels to keep up with, the, the, the real spoke wheels? They're a real pain in the you-know-where. I have a new set ready for it, but these are the original 45-year-old wheels. They look they look amazing for the age. Thank you very much. Now, what what is this powered by? This is a V12, 5.3 uh, liter, four carburetor, Jaguar overhead cam motor. Okay. This actually has a decorative kind of back seat in it. Decorative? Oh, yeah. That's a two plus two. I, I think they did that for insurance reasons, just to say that it was a family car. Okay. Yeah, this was, the, the roof line changed when they added the back seat, right? Yeah, this car is about nine inches longer and a few inches wider than the original series. This is the last of the uh, series. And these are all steel? All steel. They made some of these in aluminum? Uh, there were some lightweight coupes in the early years, in the early 60s. Very rare. Very rare, very rare. Well, I thank you very much for talking to us about it. Thank you so much for uh, taking a look. Well, I mentioned in the opener that this is late October. We're right up against Halloween, and this is probably the only car show that you're going to see this season that has a car like this in the show. I'm here with the owner. Tell us what we're looking at and tell us your name. My name is Gerald Carroll. This is a 1969 Cadillac Superior combination car. It's a combination of hearse and ambulance. It can be used either or. I guess that all depends on how the uh, scene of the accident went. Yeah, true, true. How long have you had it? I've had this one for about a year. I got it from uh, Craigslist out of Massachusetts. I drove up there, bought it the same day, and drove it back. I was told it was in service in Kentucky until 2007. Okay, that's what it, so it's it's seen its use. Yep. Have you done anything to it since you've had it? When I bought it, it had no interior in the rear. It was it was gutted. Uh, I think the guy was going to make a limousine out of it or something. So, I have some friends that have some spare cars, and I was able to get all the correct parts and put them back in there the way that they should be. Um, still need a little bit of work done to it. I had to do some painting to it, but uh, overall, on the outside, it's pretty much how I got it. Now you got you, the people at home got to be watching this thinking, how do you go about finding a casket? The casket I actually got off of Craigslist too. I got it real cheap. Uh, a kid was using it as a promotion for a, a protest that he was doing. Um, they were going to tear the woods down by his house, and he he filled it with stuffed raccoons and deers and stuff. And you know, after he was done with it, he had no use for it, so he sold it real cheap on Craigslist. So you can buy a casket on yeah. Craigslist. Who would have who would have thought? Supposedly, uh, a while ago, it was illegal to own them, and a lot of people remind me about that. But now I got it on Craigslist, fair and square. It's mine. I've had the casket longer than I've had the car. Well, I thank you very much in the spirit of Halloween and everything that goes with it. I thank you for showing it to us and bringing it out today. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for coming over and taking a look. In the spirit today of looking at everything as different as we've usually seen, I've made my way over here to a, what looks to be a pretty stock Cadillac. Tell us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about it. Tell us your name. My name is Tommy Novak. It's a 1970 DeVille convertible. It's got a uh, LS1 swap, O2 Corvette motor, shave firewall, engine base fully painted, custom air ride suspension, 26 inch Ford Giada wheels, full custom interior, custom dash, custom fiberglass trunk. Now you mentioned that dash, and we, we're going to talk about like the wheels on a lot of this, mm -hmm. but you mentioned the dash. Tell us what, what, are, what are we looking at on that dash? Well, it's got a 19 inch screen, 7 inch touch screen, all digital gauges, custom wood grain. And I made it all from scratch. You did all that. Yeah, that's yeah. it's it's amazing work. I've, I I mentioned I heard I heard a couple of people talk to me say mm -hmm. that you did everything on this. It's yeah. you did an amazing job. Thank you. 
appreciate and, it. And the wheels, they're twenty sixes. I don't think I've ever seen twenty sixes. Oh yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> How much yeah. surgery did you have to do to get to get that to fit in there? A little trimming on the rear, that was it. Not That's it. Really? Yeah. They like up front they fit they yeah. fit in just like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they sit right on the wheel wells when the air's down. The interior, that's that's leather? Yes. <laughs> That'd yeah. be about we get about six cows in there. Yeah, it yeah, was a lot, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, Newcastle upholstery, they did it. Did a real awesome job on it. And of course all the bright work's done, all the chrome, all that. Who did your chrome work? Uh AP chrome out of California. That's they, they did a beautiful job. Yeah. The, the, the camera's probably not gonna pick up how nice the bright work on this is. How about the paint? Uh, my dad's buddy did it. We did it in a single car garage. I did all the body work, got it ready, and he sprayed it for me. This long and this straight of a car has got to be really, really tough. And this is just banjo string straight. Oh, yeah. About four months of body work. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wear your arm out blocking yeah. all that out. Oh, yeah. Yep. How long have you had it? Uh, about four or five years. That's, that, that's, that's a long time. It's yeah. a long time to build this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I thank you very much for talking about it today, and thanks for letting us put us on the show. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good one. For those of you that have seen the show in the past, might recognize our next guest. I'm here with Scott. Scott's the promoter. Scott's the one that put all this wonderful show together. Scott came out to be a nice show. Awesome. You look at the sky. We got some clouds. Uh, turned out perfect. This is a rain date bake up. Just over 500. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, we did. You yeah, mean broke good. broke 500 yeah, cars? Yes, broke five. Yeah, it's uh, 540 something, 550. Yeah, that's very that's good. great. That's great. And for a rain date, and very you're good. and you're up against football on Sunday. Exactly. All the yeah, guys that want to stay and watch that. Eagles you, to boot. Yeah. yeah, you did yeah. great. And it, there's a, there's it's a great show. We got to look at some really great cars. Some very nice cars out here. Everybody comes out. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah, it turned out real good. Now, we didn't walk down Vendor's Row yet. I don't know if we're going to okay. have time to make down Vendor's Row, but okay. why don't you just give the vendors a real quick plug? The sponsors are the Die Guy, BNF Towing, Tri Supply and Equipment, Smith Volkswagen, Auto Everything, Cabela's, Audio Works, Vintage Tin Signs, Tri State Battery, Tint World, Wilmington, Delaware, Crazy Coatings, Power Tech, Easton Muscle and Custom. Wow, that's it, detailing supplies. And as always, Crazy for Cars TV was here to put it all together for us. Yes, sir. Tell us when, when the next ones are coming up. Uh, we have to do the show here twice a year, once in May, once in October. Traditionally, the day before Mother's Day, but not always. It's kind of based on the, on the horse racing season and, uh, and then the, the, towards the end of October. And for the here that we're talking about, for those that are tuned in late, we're actually at Delaware Park, just between Kirkwood Highway and I guess that's uh, Route 7 or seven, Route yeah, 4? Yes, yeah, 7. Yeah. Okay, Saturday yes. Before. Yeah, so this is the we're at Delaware Park. There's two shows here a year. Yeah, two shows, May and October. May and October. Yep. This of course we're at the October one. We saw some we saw some really great stuff. We looked at the one we talked about Halloween. You're not gonna see that on any, any other car shows. That's true. Now yeah. we're standing here we're looking at an awesome, awesome float over here too. I don't know if you got a shot of that. I didn't. We're gonna oh, take a look at that too. Beautiful. The guy did a lot of work, turned out real nice. Now, we've had We've had your coupe on other shows. I, uh, I haven't seen the money out yeah, in a long out, time. It doesn't get out quite as much. Tell us real quick about the Monte Carlo, uh, what we're looking at. It's a 1987 Aero Coupe Monte Carlo. The Aero Coupe has a different back glass for the NASCAR version. Uh, just bought the car. It's got the blower motor, which is out of, actually out of my, I have a 1970 Monte Carlo. That motor has been in all three of these cars that I have. Uh, Something to cruise around in, I guess. A little, a little harder on gas than the other, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a great looking car, too. They didn't do a lot of those with T tops, though, did they? No, not with the T tops. And it, with the Aero Coupes, there was only 6,052. And this year, there was only 200 in 86 the year before. So they're pretty limited to glass. Yeah, that's, yeah the Aero Coupe yeah, with the T tops makes it a pretty rare option. Yes, it does. Yeah. All right. Aero well, Scott. Thank you very much Thank for you. having us out today. Thanks for, Thanks for having such a great show. Yeah, it's a great turnout and great people. All the staff here, everybody's been great. Everybody that's seeing the show needs to come here next yes, year. There you go. Thanks. Hope to see you in May. I talked about this being late in October in a Halloween type show. We looked at a hearse and I can assure everyone looking, you will never see a setup like this on any car show that you're going to see on TV. I'm here with the owner of all of this. Tell us your name and tell us what we're looking at. My name's Carl Boney, and we're looking at a, a float that we designed off of one of my car trailers. Little odds and ends from all over, from different stores. It comes with a 40 Dodge on the back end that we haven't started to build yet. 
This is absolutely amazing. There's a little bit of everything here. Starting in one end, we got, we got the cemetery on the front. Yeah, it was just our design. We, we want to keep with the Roaring Twenties theme, so we decided to go with the cemetery. Found the, the gate up in PA, and then just made the tombstones. Next year, of course, it be a lot more added to when things go on sale and I can buy more. I talked to Scott. Scott said, you know, you got to make sure you get this on here. And I absolutely wanted to. He said this was going to be in a, in a parade. Yes. It was supposed to be in the Main Street Newark Parade, but Delaware Park got rained out, so we decided to stay here. Well, we appreciate that. I probably wouldn't have gotten to see it otherwise. This, this looks like a lot, a lot of work. What kind of car is out back? It's a 1940 Dodge. Are you going to do a restoration on that? Yeah, we're going to put a Cummins diesel on it. <laughs> that, that's a neat ride. Yeah, I have 29 other cars, so. Oh, so just, just a couple. Yeah, just a couple extra. This is great. Thank you very much for bringing this out and right, showing, it to us to, showing it to us today. Well, we were looking at the float, and we turned around, and I saw this casket car sitting over here. And this is you also, so tell us a little bit about the casket car. It's uh, sitting on a 1923 frame. It's actually a casket vault, which is 7-gauge galvanized steel. It's got a small block Chevy 350 in it. It's all custom built by hand. I designed it, and a friend of mine, which is somewhere around here, Tom Welsh, actually put everything together, welded it cut out all the wings and the fenders and everything for it. This looks like a real fun ride too. Now is it street legal? Is yeah. it streetable? Yes. It's got brake lights, headlights, turn signals, and I even got air conditioning. <laughs> yes it does. Was, <laughs> did this start as like the real vault? Or, yeah. or, it, it did. So you've uh, like just built around just that? Just built around it. That's actually, it's actually a really slick looking. Now what about the back where it says Dracula? We call it Dragula 2.0 because of the Munsters Dragula car. Right. So we just upgraded a little bit. Was so that a trunk back there? What's what's yeah. in the big square? Uh, the fuel cells in the back, and it also has for chairs. And so if you go to a car show, you can take everything with it. All right. It's a shame you couldn't get a little bit bigger tire in the back. It's as big as they come. <laughs> it's got it boat fenders on it. <laughs> again, thank you very much for showing us this as well. Thanks again. This is the way you get your car on the TV show. This gentleman walked up, introduced himself, and said, I've got a car over here. So tell us your name and tell us a little bit about the car. Hi, my name is Charlie, and what I have is a 1966 Chevy Bel Air. And what makes this car special is, uh, one, it's a two-door post car, which you don't see a lot of. You see a lot more of the Impalas. And the other thing is, uh, I ran the VIN number. It was built right here in Delaware at the Boxwood plant. That's really like a home-built home car. Yes, so I don't know much about the history of the car. It bounced around a lot of owners. The body work was done when I got it, and it just needed a lot of uh, mechanical work to get it to be here today. All right, well, so what have you done to it since you've had it? Uh, first thing is I did the uh, starter, alternator, voltage regulator, brakes, radiator, water pump. The list goes on and on. I've done a lot. All the normal maintenance items to put it back street worthy and dependable. Exactly. How about the interior? Did you go through that? The seats were in it when I got it. I still need to get the door panels and everything on it to finish it up. The paint looks pretty good. Did, did you do the paint or was the paint already done? No, it was like that when I bought it. Okay, what are your plans for it? My plans are to finish up the interior and then uh, just keep tinkering with it and you know maybe put a bigger motor in it. Guys, this is this is what we look at when we're, when we're out of car shows. We look at the stuff that's nice driver quality stuff not everybody has to have the hundreds of thousands of dollars in totally restored totally custom this is the nice nice cars you can enjoy drive regularly bring out to shows thank you very much for walking up and introducing yourself thank you thanks for showing us your car today thank you well, we found another car built here local at the Boxwood plant right next door to the last car we looked at I'm here with the owner tell us your name and tell us what we're looking at uh, my name is Mike, and you're looking at a 68 Chevy Impala Custom, built at the Boxwood plant. It's a unique car. It has a couple options that you don't see normally on any of these cars. It's got factory cruise, factory rear window defroster, 8-track player under the dash, which gave it the speakers in the front kick panel. My dad and my two uncles both worked at the Boxwood plant when this car was built. It went into Colonial Chevrolet, sold him back to Newport, spent all its life in, in Newport 
and I'm the second family to own the car. <laughs> that's fan. That's a nice story that you've got the story with the car. Rewind back to that eight-track player under the dash. I can remember in the '70s. Yes, I'm old enough to have had cars in the '70s, and that was that was the popular thing. The eight-track players, and the and then the we went to cassette players after that. The factory actually offered an under dash. Under dash, yes, sir. Under the dash. Uh, do you it actually still works, but I don't have it plugged into the speaker system because I have no eight tracks. It's hard to find any that are any good. I was uh, that was my next thing to ask you if you had any eight tracks. Sometimes you, if you go over to the farmers market, you'll see stacks of them over there from time to time. Not often. I'm afraid to try them though because they're so old. That's true. That's true. Well, thank you very much for showing us showing us the car. Thanks for bringing it out today. And again, this is how you get your car on the show. Walk up, introduce yourself. Thank you very much. And thanks for showing us your car. Yep. The whole show has pretty much been a Halloween, autumn, fall type of type of themed show. Why break tradition? We're here with a Jeep, and it's colored for the season. <laughs> tell us your name and tell us a little bit about what we're looking at. Hi, I'm Juanita Laird, and this is a 2012 Orange Crush. As you can see, it's got a pumpkin on it. It's perfect for the season. I named my Jeep Barefoot Diva. I wear bare feet and my diva is a Jeep that doesn't get muddy. <laughs> it doesn't get muddy. For those of you that have been watching, you saw the opener of the show, the black Jeep is mine and it's been down the canal and they're supposed to get muddy. They're supposed to get dirty. Right, but this is my everyday driver and I don't want to break her. She's too pretty and everybody loves her. Everybody loves her. Everybody wants to see it. Everybody wants to get in it. Everybody has fun with my Now, I'm, I'm seeing some accessories on here. Did you did you do a lot of the accessories yourself? I'm seeing, like, the LED driving lights and that sort of thing. Did you do those? I, I, got, I put the LED lights on there. I have rock lights on. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see them, but they do have uh, multicolored lights underneath. I have lights inside my Jeep that turns into orange. Everything else is plain and everything else that came with the Jeep when I bought it. And I see we have it decorated for the season. We have the yeah, boas on the boas. back. Yes. I got my boas. I got the pumpkin necklaces. I got the pumpkin on the front. I don't have my candy. What would a yeah. diva be without the boa? I know, right? I know, <laughs> you gotta right? Have the boas. I got to have the boa. She's got to be the diva. I thank you very much for showing it to us today and thank thanks for adding so it to the show. Have a great day. I almost laugh when I when I put the, this kind of stuff on the show. This is crazy for cars, and we are crazy for all kinds of cars and trucks. I'm here with the owner of this beautiful truck. Tell us your name and tell us what we're looking at. Uh, my name's Dave Neal, and that's a 1971 M35A2 military truck. They call it a deuce and a half. Deuce and a half. That's because yes. there's what the the number of axles. Yeah, that it, it carries uh, about 5,000 pounds or more, that's why. And then they also got five tons, but this one's just a uh, two and a half ton. Okay, all right. Now, how long have you had it? In uh, two years. Now, was this always an Army truck, or yeah. was this something you put together as a uh, tribute? It was always an Army truck, and it was uh, Fort Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania's headquarters truck. And it was released from the military in 2009, and a guy did it pulled it out of it and he bought it from the auction like and then he painted it in the Vietnam era color because it wasn't that color it was what the newer ones use a different color scheme right that's the tan right yeah they would tan or they would be a light green like the inside of this door you'll see in there is a lighter green on it okay and but this was uh, done in the Vietnam color and the Vietnam what the way the lettering what they would done in Vietnam in like 71 and the uh, numbers on the front is the number from his dad's unit in Vietnam. Even though this car truck was not in Vietnam, though. Right. But it was uh, that, that number was from Vietnam, though. Who manufactures these trucks? This one here is AM General. AM General. So it's the same people that make the Hummer and, and all of those? Yes, it's the same one. Okay. Now, I'm seeing it. I mean, it's really outfitted with... Some arsenal and stuff here too. But yes. tell, tell, like, what about the guns and up on the hood? The gun on the hood is a, a it's an M60 and it's about 80% original, but it has a dummy receiver in it, so you can't fire it. It's, you can't fire any rounds through it or nothing. Okay. Nothing. Now, do you take this and put it in parades? Is that? Yeah, the... I put it in parades and uh, I go to veteran shows and veterans parades. I go to car shows and I get handouts things if anybody wants me to bring it for the vets for the hospitals and stuff. 
No, what what was your motivation? I mean, were like, are you like an army guy, or was this well, I, just dad, something that you enjoyed? My dad was always in. Uh, uh, I came from the military because he was uh, in Korea during uh, the Korean War, and he drove a deuce and a half, and he hauled a 155 millimeter howitzer and fired it in uh, Korea, and it was always a big thing for him. So. When I found out I could actually buy one so he could drive it, that's when I started my process of trying to get it. And basically, between saving the money up and doing it, it took me about 18 years before I bought one. Well, that's really, it, it's fascinating to watch what cars mean something to different owners. I mean, when you're at a car show like this, you see all kinds of different cars, all kinds of different trucks, you name it, and it's always a different story, and it's fascinating to find out what motivates somebody to be into what they are. Yes, uh, I find a lot on it, and wh what I did with mine, too, is that I bought a, since so many vets and stuff tell me stories, I went and bought a book, and I have them, they sign their name and when they were in the military, what units and stuff, and I have about 420 names now. I saw that book. That's that's a really nice book. Yeah. Thank you very much for well, bringing it out you. today. Thanks for for keeping the keeping the story going okay thank you thanks a lot well we've got obviously what is definitely a muscle type car here today i've got the owners here with me tell us your names and tell us a little bit about the cars my name is charlie gonzalez uh, carmen gonzalez it's my wife carmen's car that's a 1970 ls6 454 it's slightly modified the close to 700 horses it's got the uh, 392 uh, rear in there moser rear and it's a 400 turbo trans with a shift kit and also modified and uh, the car is a fun car to drive and uh, we love it we had it for nine years and now we're just gonna move on it's a beautiful car what what is this paint color called this is a uh, malachite green like the 67 malibu right. color this is what this color is a malachite green yep. this is a great color you don't see very many cars in this color when people are putting the restorations together they're going with more mainstream colors this is a gorgeous color and the stripes set it off nice thank yep. you very much thank yeah you. and this these, this car came from arizona also it's uh all the panels on it are, is original the body has 72,000 miles on the body itself but this car has been restored uh since restore has just 2,000 miles on it so it's uh it's a fresh, it's a fresh bill, even though it's nine years old, but uh, 2,000 miles, yeah. 2,000 miles has been put on this car in nine years. It's, it's pretty outstanding, I think. Cars, cars from out that way, the bodies hold up great, but I know you had to put an interior in there. No, yeah. this, we, this car was just like this when we bought it. The interior was redone when the car was redone. Okay. So, you know, they had to redo the whole car again. Right, right, right. So, yeah, the interior at uh, one point, at, at some point, it was redone. Well, thank you very much for showing it to us today. It's a beautiful car. Thanks thank for you. bringing it out. Well, thank, thank you, you for stopping and talking to us. God Appreciate bless. It. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, this is wrapping up another great episode of Crazy for Cars TV. Thanks for joining us. We really want to hear from you. Let us know where you're going to be next season. Send us, a, send us an email. Drop us a line. You can get us through PPI TV. You can get us through Crazy for Cars. Go to our website. Look for us on Facebook. But I want to thank everybody that showed us their cars today. Thanks for all of the people that showed out to Delaware Park. Look for us here next year. We'll be at at least one of these shows next year. We'll be at some of the same shows next season. We'll be at some very new ones next year. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. We look forward to hearing from all of you. Thanks for watching.